Welcome to Sports Unfolded Film Breakdown Edition. And today I just want to talk about how some of these offensive coordinators, some of these play callers, some of these geniuses in today's NFL, I just want to talk about a really peculiar, um, interesting way that they've been able to get their best talented receiver open. And if you know a lot about the X's and O's of football, or even if you're trying to learn more or you're just interested in the X's and O's of football, you're really going to enjoy this video. So let's cut the chase and let's just get right to it. Oh, wait, one more thing. If you really like this heat, you like this merch, go check it out. Link in bio. And for all you grinders, we got some grind cloth. Go check that out, too. All right, so I just want to talk about how offensive coordinators have been scheming their guys open by really just putting your best receiver in the backfield, okay? So the criteria for this is usually a slot receiver, a smaller guy, a guy that can blend in as being a running back and oftentimes. Um, and the Dolphins, what they're just going to do is they're just going to put their fastest guy, their best guy in the backfield, Jalen Waddle. He's one of the fastest guys in the league right here. He's the two of is left at the top of the screen. So what they're going to do is they're just going to run him all the way across the formation, and the linebackers in zone coverage are just going to have no hope of, of getting this guy before he gets the first down. So Lattimore is going to have to come from his deep from his deep zone and make a tackle on him, but he's going to get the edge because he's Jalen Waddle and he's one of the fastest guys in the league, and he's going to get thrown out of bounds for some extra yardage. All right, so... Here's another example. You have Jalen Waddle again. This is a very similar formation. You have a bunch formation to the bottom of your screen. Very clustered, right? And the Saints show blitz. So this looks to be zone coverage off the bat. You only have one man really over the tip of this bunch. You have a receiver or a corner way off the bunch, and then you're going to have a safety way back here that's not in the picture. But Jalen Waddle, look at him. Look what he's going to do. Snap is taken. He's going to come out here. He's a decoy. Because there's so much attention when you have that guy that is that fast in the backfield. So you're going to get that attention. You're going to have this flats player fly over here to play this guy who's really a decoy. And when it's Jalen Waddle, you're going to have a lot of attention on him. And then you have Miles Gaskin right here to replace that guy that was in that zone. And he's wide open. Oops, what was that? And then Tagovailo just delivers an inaccurate ball. But you see how much room he had there? He would have gotten at least 15 yards on that play. And one last example I want to show is Jalen Waddle um, in the backfield here. This is from the Monday Night Football game that happened a few days ago. So, Tagovailo is going to motion Waddle over here to the top of the screen. And this is actually man to man. This guy right here, the furthermost guy to this side of the field for the Saints, has man coverage on Gesicki. And Gesicki's job is actually to set a screen or a pick on this linebacker who has Jalen Waddle and man coverage. That's that's the real goal of this idea, to put your best receiver on a mismatch with one of these guys, one of these 250-pound linebackers. That are Their job is usually to stuff the run. And now you're asking them to guard a guy like Jalen Waddle? That's not going to happen, right? Gasicki's going to go, and he's actually going to set a little pick. He's going to make this guy go over him. And Tagovailoa has the easiest job in the world, just flip the ball in the flat on this little shoot route to Jalen Waddle. And you know 53 is not going to catch him before he gets at least 10 yards, turns up the field, and he gets about 10, yeah. I mean, that's just impossible to guard for one of these linebackers, and that's the whole goal of this. All right, so I want to show another way that offensive coordinators, these geniuses, have been utilizing this. This is Matt Nagy. Some people don't think he's a genius, but he is because he's made it to the NFL. You may not like him, but he's a genius. Um, everyone that has a job in the league is a genius. That being said, this time the, the Bears have a split backfield. That means they have two people in the backfield. And you can see by all of the defense's eyes that this is man coverage. His man's on the number one receiver. See, he's picking it back at the quarterback, but they're playing on this little, um, this little stack formation. They're playing a one-to-two, man-to-man. You can tell very clearly that this is man-to-man. So what they're going to do, this guy's going to run a little clear-out route in case it is zone. And then here's Demir Bird. He's the Bears' best route runner for a slot guy. You're not gonna, Allen Robinson is their best route runner, but you're not going to put him in the backfield because he's an X receiver. You don't put your tall, lanky receivers in this formation. It just, it just doesn't work right. You need to have a slot guy, a guy that can blend in as being a running back. So 
what I'm getting to is the second way that you can utilize this is instead of just taking Jalen Waddle's speed like the Dolphins did, you can run little option routes. This is the main idea of this. When you get man coverage with a, a mismatch with a linebacker or a strong safety even, you can run an option route. What's an option route? Well, it's pretty much where you go up to your defender out of the backfield and you can either run out or in basing off your defender's leverage or if it's zone coverage you can just sit between the zones so Demir Bird he's going to take off right here he's looking at his defender's leverage let's go one more step and he's reading this is Julian Black the Packer safety he's outside leverage you see his leverage here he's protecting the sideline so Demir Bird is going to read that and he's going to run a little angle route inside takes that step cuts inside fields delivers a ball and then it's just pure speed. That's what the mismatch is. You put your receiver there to have mismatches, and then it's goodbye because no linebacker or strong safety can guard your fastest, best receiver. All right, so this one's going to be very similar. This is DJ Moore against Dallas. So you have DJ Moore right here flanking Sam Donald's right. And so this tight end here is just going to run a little clear-out route. It's going to be a high-low concept. He's going to have that same idea. He's going to run a little option route. If the defender's protecting inside, he can run out. If he's protecting the sideline, he can run what Demir Bird did and run a little angle route into the end zone. And if it's zone, you can just sit down here. You see this run a lot by running backs, but when you get it run by a receiver, that's when the ultimate mismatches come. So let's look at the snap here. Um... So you can see here, J-Ron Curse. This is a little miscommunication. I can't tell if he had DJ Moore man coverage or not, if it was if it was his zone. It's really hard to see at this point. But either way, it was miscommunication. And DJ Moore realizes there's nobody in here. This safety is facing the trip side. So he's just going to cut it into an angle route, stick his foot in the ground, and then it's easy pitch and catch for Darnold and DJ Moore. All right, so here you might have heard of this guy right here, number 18 for the Vikings, Justin Jefferson. He's only known as a top three receiver by a lot of NFL expert, if that's what you want to say. So he's going to run the same thing that Demir Bird and DJ Moore did, an option route where you can go out if the defender's inside or in if the defender's protecting the sideline. If it's zone, you sit. I've already told you all that. This guy's eyes are on Jefferson, but so is this guy. So what that tells you is that the Bears know Jefferson's a great receiver. He's one of the best best route runners in the league. Um, and he's not in this position much because he's more of an X receiver, a solo guy receiver. Um, so when the defenders see that he's in the backfield, everyone's like, whoa, everybody, the best player on the field who's a receiver is lined up as running back. So let's, uh, let's have the whole defense cue in on that. That's a little suspicious. So what you're going to get is Jefferson. He's going to run that little angle route. Makes a defender fall right here. But that's irrelevant. We knew that was going to happen because his, his outside he was outside leverage, so Jefferson's going to cut it in. But wait, there was actually two guys on him. Miscommunication, everybody's eyes were on Jefferson, and then in the back of the end zone, it's a wide-open touchdown. You can see their eyes at the beginning of the play. They're cued in on Jefferson, and that's what this is for. That's what this concept is for, drawing mismatches and then having the defense focus, your, focus their attention on you. Um... Because they know what you can do when you're playing running back. You really have the whole field to run these option routes, which is going to clear a lot of space. And then with miscommunication, a wide open touchdown. Thank you guys so much for listening to Sports Unfolded Film Breakdown Edition. If you liked it, please tell a friend, be a friend. Let's get this thing going. Go check out our socials. Um, go check out the merch link in bio. But if you didn't like us, just don't come back. I don't know why you're still here at the end of the video. That being said, thank you guys, and I'll see you next video.